Hello everyone, my name is Dimitri, I'm your guide to underrated tourist attractions around the world. Today my story is gonna be about very unusual museum in Varna. Varna is the biggest town on the Bulgarian sea coast, if you didn't know that. Unlike the majority of the car museums in Europe, this particular one is dedicated to the socialist era. Yes, Bulgaria used to be a socialist state. In addition to the cars and motorcycles, in the museum you can find also TV sets, table games, cigarettes, toys, etc, etc. And you can also meet this guy here. Calm down, it's just a Vox figure. The Vox museum is part of the exhibition and to be fair I think this is the biggest Vox communist leaders gathering in the world. Or one of the biggest. Before getting started, I wanted to say that I've made a video about this museum in Russian as well, with subtitles of course. I try to use there some different shots, so you can check it in the description below. First of all, I wanted to make clear about the so-called Eastern Bloc of Socialist Countries. The Warsaw Pact of Countries, commonly known as Eastern Bloc, included not only Bulgaria and the Soviet Union, but also Hungary, Poland, Albania, Romania, Czechoslovakia and Germany. East Germany. Yes, after the Second World War, Germany was divided and the eastern part of the country was controlled by the Soviets. Even though the state was ruled by socialists, Usually German quality remained German quality. In Bulgaria too, German cars used to be popular. Warburg, this one, and Trabant. Here you are. Warburg, as you can see, not this one, this is the old model. So Warburg used to be quite comfortable and very spacious inside. I know what I'm talking about. My family had a Warburg. Trabant on the other side was, uh, let's say, not perfect. The unofficial nickname of this car in Bulgaria was cardboard. Because the car body, allegedly, was made by cardboard. In fact, it used to be some kind of plastic, but quite soft anyway. Both these cars have a couple of similarities. Firstly, they've got two-stroke engines. Secondly, the gear lever is situated on the steering wheel. By the way, I've used in this video some Bulgarian and Soviet songs which used to be beloved in the socialist countries. You can easily find the information about these songs in the description below. That's if you want to listen to the original songs. Check them out and you won't be disappointed. My childhood was in the People's Republic of Bulgaria and my maternal grandmother lived in the Soviet Union. That's why I spent almost every summer holiday there. So, as you can see, I know a bit about these countries. I was even waiting in a queue for a ladder. That's a Russian car. Maybe you don't understand what does it mean to wait in a queue for a car. Well, I'm gonna explain. In Bulgaria, you couldn't just go to the store and buy a car. The quantity of the cars was limited, so your name was in the waiting list. Usually this waiting took years. In the USSR the situation was even worse. The average Soviet worker's salary was between 1 and 200 rubles, while the car price was approximately between 5 and 10 thousand. So in order to save enough money for the vehicle, the Soviet comrades needed to sacrifice several years of their life. That's why many people bought even small and not very comfortable cars like this. You might have seen this amazing vehicle in one of the episodes of Top Gear with Jeremy Clarkson. This is Zaporozhets. And to be fair, this here is perhaps the worst Soviet car ever. There's quite a famous joke in Russia about driving Zaporozhets. Half an hour of shame and you will get to work. Many people Tired from the long waiting for a car, even bought motorcycles with sidecars. My neighbor, for instance, had a bike exactly like this. He literally used it as a truck to transport potatoes, cabbage, tomatoes, apples, honey, tools, people, sometimes drunk people, etc, etc. 
And now I have to tell you of course about the Bulgarian industry. On your screens you can see the Bulgarian computer Pravets. Yes, these appliances were produced in Bulgaria. And to be fair, we had quite serious computer industry, which was well known in the Eastern Bloc of countries. These motorcycles and bicycles were also made in Bulgaria. They were produced by the company Balkan, which in Bulgaria means Balkan. You know, Bulgaria is situated in the middle of the Balkan Peninsula, so I presume that makes sense. Nowadays these bikes might look a bit old or even ancient, but for me, when I was a teenager by the late 80s, this bicycle was very contemporary. Let's take a look at the cars from the rest of the communist countries. Polish cars, Warszawa and Zhuk. Czechoslovakian car Škoda and motorcycle Java. Romanian car Dacia. And the Yugoslavian car Zastava. Although Yugoslavia had quite bad relations with the Eastern Bloc of countries, business is business. And you could see many of these vehicles on the Bulgarian roads. Interestingly, all these Polish, Romanian, German and other vehicles you could barely see in the Soviet Union. The majority of the cars on the roads were made in the USSR, like this Volga, for example. Volga used to be kind of working horse for the taxi drivers. Because the car was very spacious inside and also you could load plenty of luggage in the boot. The only problem was the price. So an average Soviet citizen if he wasn't a taxi driver, could not afford to drive it. Unlike the local authorities, they adored it. And this car as well. This here is maybe one of the main attractions of the exhibition. Not only because the vehicle is big and obviously extremely comfortable and spacious inside, and not because this type of cars used to be very expensive, but due to the fact that this particular car used to be property of the Bulgarian General Secretary Todor Zhivkov. Don't ask me how did the owner of the museum get this car and how much did he pay for it. I always knew collectors achieve their goals. This car brand is called Chaika, which in Russian means seagull, and it was designed specifically for high-ranked communist officials. Maybe not every communist leader owned a car like this. But the Bulgarian one certainly did. Maybe because the relations between the USSR and People's Republic of Bulgaria, as you can see from this photo, were uh, very warm. These passionately kissing young men are the leaders of the Soviet Union and Bulgaria. Let's move now to the Vox Museum. You know, I've been to the museum three years ago, and since that time the Vox figures collection has grown significantly. Today there are more than 70 Vox dummies in the museum. The quantity of retro cars is the same, 70. Initially Mr. Atanasov, that's the name of the owner, decided to make a replica of the Bulgarian General Secretary Todor Zhivkov and other communist uh, celebrities. This is Comrade Zhivkov, on the left, along with Mr. Brezhnev, the Soviet General Secretary. In the first room, apart from this lovely couple, all the rest are Bulgarian actors. In the second room, the majority of the figures are former communist leaders, and amongst them are also these two uh, buddies. At the end of room number 3 is Mr. Bean along with another British celebrity. Next to Joshua is the Bulgarian professional boxer Kobrat Pulev. In this exhibition hall you can see also maybe the most popular Bulgarian football player Christo Stoichkov. In the next room are mainly singers.
Whilst in the last room you'll find the communist representatives of China, Poland, East Germany, Czechoslovakia and of course of the USSR. Along with all these people, in the corner of the room there's one more person which doesn't quite fit in this company. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet Mr. Pablo Escobar. Maybe he used to be a communist as all these people, but I'm afraid his main job was... Mm, drug dealer. The owner of the museum definitely has sense of humor. At this point our excursion is about to finish. Thanks for watching and good luck!